Hello everyone, I'm Srimanthi and I'm currently working as an ML engineer. So today we are going to build an awesome machine learning project. Basically, build your own chat GPT and have it an offline version of it. So that's going to be fantastic. As you know, this is like from scratch, building a mini chat GPT in Python, just using Python and nothing else. So that's going to be really fantastic. I'm dedicated to teaching you ML and ensuring that you land an ML job as soon as possible. Okay, so let's, without any further ado, dive right in. Basically, we are going to use something called a hugging face model. Basically, as you can see right here, this Falcon 7B instruct is um is an actually a very good model. And let's build a little small chat GPT on our own in Python. Um, because obviously, you will need to impress your interviewers. And when they see this building a small mini chat gpt on your own they're going to be really impressed trust me cool so now you can see right here the seven seven billion parameters model so basically this is fine tuned for a mixture of chat and instruct data set um we're going to use this model to build our own offline chat gpt without any kind of use of internet oh, well we are building on collab so we'll probably need internet for just running collab but not anything else no calls to api or anything it's going to be like completely offline we're going to use uh, Colab just because Colab has a GPU. So if you're going to use GPU credits, so you'll need Colab. Great, sounds amazing. So as you can see right here, we're going to use the tokenizer. So basically, let me just break it down a little bit. So first thing, there's a tokenizer, which generates tokens from the um, from the input that we're going to give. Suppose, for example, as you can see right here, this is giving an input of obsessed with giraffes, the most glorious animal on this face of the earth. Um, so this, this sentence, this cannot be interpreted by a computer obviously so that is why this is going to be broken down into first um tokens so these tokens we are going to have uh, these are going to be numbers and some tokens which they already have a vocabulary flow for and these um tokens are going to be next passed in through pipeline where the tokens will be used for training uh, i think it's already trained so it won't be used for training right now it's only used for prediction but if you're training then it will be used for training to predict the next token so this is how all this happens well o3 now is going to be something different but we're not, we're not going to discuss that right now whatever the models we have been having open source till before o3 we are going to have the same thing they are working by predicting the next token and the highest probability of the next token is going to be what we are going to see here great now you do get it we are now going to implement this. So we are going to need a GPU for this and we are going to build our own chatbot. So let's do that. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? So obviously we are going to need Torch, definitely, PyTorch. And we are going to need Transformers. As I just now said, we are going to need Tokenizer and also Pipeline. Let me just confirm if we have GPU. Yeah, now you're going to use this basically. Use this T4 GPU, because otherwise it's going to be very difficult. It's going to take a very long time. So let's use GPU to do this. So now we are going to do this first. Next thing is, let that happen. Let's get our model. Just now said, this is our model. Hugging face. Open source model. So we are going to use this. This open source model is like a um, boon for us. We have to use it as much as possible for our benefits. Next thing we are going to have is the tokenizer. So let's do that. Tokenizer dot from pre-train. So all these models, they come with their tokenizer of their own. So we are going to use the tokenizer of this model only. Now we are going to develop the pipeline. So let's do that. Yeah, this is getting downloaded now. And it has got downloaded the tokenizer. Now we're going to need the pipeline. So first thing pipeline is going to be text generation. Next thing we are going to have the model. Next thing, we are going to have the tokenizer. As you can see right here, um, these AI things are really good, but I would suggest to like use it on your own. D-type, the data type is going to be um, torch dot, I think float 32, no, fl B float 16, which is actually the most common thing that is used for this interpretation and training actually. So we'll come to that, why it's so important. Device map is auto, and then let's have max length of the output to be 200. What else? So let's keep writing the code while this is getting downloaded. So the next thing that comes is basically giving the prompt. So what is the prompt going to be like? We are building a chat GPT, so the prompt could be user input. But, you know, just to make it very simple, I'm not going to do user input. Let's just say what is relativity. 
This is our prompt. Sounds good. Now we're going to pass this into the model. How are we going to do that? Same way. We've already generated the pipeline. Now basically we are going to get the sequences. What sequence is the output? So that we already have the pipeline. So now we're going to pass in the prompt. By the way, one more thing before this, this is very important actually. We don't want this model to be very like generate complex text. So we are going to uh, stop it as soon as the first new line token we find in our answer. So as you can see right here, it's tokenizer.encode slash n. So let's take the accept it. Um, yeah, AI yeah, really helps you a lot, I must say. But yeah, so we got the new line token. So we are going to have the um, end of sentence token, EOS token ID to be our new line. We don't want to generate anything more than that. Um, sorry, yeah. And we're going to have the do sample definitely as true. And we're going to have the top k as 10 but um to return just one sequence you don't want it to return multiple sequences you can return multiple sequences but it's not necessary at the moment yeah so this is done basically the prompt is also ready sequences is also ready now we can simply do print sequences uh sorry sequences sorry sequences zero and then just generated text Mm, sorry, I think it did not generate the output. So let's give max length as 500. We want it to generate 500. And, you know, don't return the question. Return full text equal to false. Let's see what it does now. Oh, sorry. I did not specify the pad token ID. Probably that is why all this is causing the problem. Exactly. So that was the problem here. As you can see right here, the max length was fixed, 200. So we should not put in max length here. The max length should go actually in the next part of the pipeline. So let's now give what is relativity. This is now going to output correctly because the max length was wrong there. Max length should have been in the second part of the pipeline. Perfect. As you can see right here, this is now having a perfect answer now have a chatbot of yourself what is uh i don't know earth going to answer perfectly so let's just go over this one more time new line token is going to be like this slash n you have alice and bob so basically the dialogue first name is my name and zero is going to be zero and one as well so user input is going to do this the prompt is going to be this and then it's in a true uh loop which is like chat gpt only you have the max length you have the do sample do sampling because uh, among the top 10, take the which, one which is like the after sampling, which is the highest probability. And you should return only one answer as well. Return, do not return full text because we don't want the uh, question also to be repeated. That is why this is very important. The end of sentence, as I said, the new line token, we don't want to output anything more than the new line. And the pad token is the same thing as the US token. I'm going to generate this and this is going to dialogue.append. So this is the dialogue. The earth is also answered. So here you go. There you go. You have your own mini chat GPT in Python. So yeah, great. This is going to be an awesome project that you can add in your resume. If you're in a second year as well, applying for Google Step Internship, Google Internship, or any kind of other internship, Meta, whatever, Microsoft, this is going to be an awesome project that you can add and it will make you stand apart from the crowd. Remember this and use this. All the best. Let's go. Next tip. We'll see you in the next video. Take care till then. Bye.